We're at the 25th CROI, uh, the 2018 CROI, and we're here with Judith Courier, who's the chair of the conference, and we really appreciate her taking the time to visit with us on this uh, auspicious moment in time for the CROI. And uh, I think we just completed the opening press conference where the chairs uh, and co-chairs sat down and kind of give us a background on the conference itself and some of the, maybe the stats and so forth. And I think it's important to understand this conference from that perspective, as well as the tedium that is it. And I think that's what it is. It's gonna be a conference with no earth shaking, but yet nonetheless important pieces. And, you know, silver bullets rather than, or silver BBs rather than a silver bullet approach. But if you would take it from there and kind of give us a sense of what you expect out of this conference. Okay, thank you. Well, this is the 25th CROI, and I, I think that um, you know, we are going to hear a lot of new information um, on both prevention, treatment, uh, and basic science. And I think what makes CROI really special is that these three different disciplines are all together at this meeting, and there's a lot of um, ways in which they influence each other. So in the, in the clinical realm, you know, sort of taking stock of where we are with antiretroviral therapy, uh, in, in the current era, um, more about integrase inhibitors, the most recently approved integrase inhibitor, Bictegravir, we're gonna learn a little more about that. The use of integrase as a first line, does it increase the risk of iris or not? Um, more about drug interactions with integrase, as well as uh, penetration of integration inhibitors into different tissues. Um, the other, there are a few new drugs. We'll hear uh, some dose finding the new Merck NRTI, um, and, and so that will be interesting as well. We're going to hear a lot about adherence, uh, how to measure it, uh, some of the biomarkers for adherence that can be measured in hair or in dried blood spots, and how well they predict who might um, develop biologic failure later on. So those could be things that could be adapted potentially into clinical practice at some point. Um, we're also going to hear updates on all of the major comorbidities and complications related to living with HIV um, over decades, and this is a critically important issue, cardiovascular disease, bone and kidney disease. And at this year's conference, maybe a, more than the past, um, emphasis on mental health. Uh, there's a plenary session on mental health and, and some talks on different mental health issues, recognizing the critical importance of dealing with mental health across the spectrum of both prevention and treatment. Mm -hmm. There will be a, a big focus on tuberculosis with some landmark, I think, studies presented looking at the use of uh, drugs to prevent TB, uh, exploring uh, the efficacy of a shorter course regimen in a study called Brief TB, uh, also preventing TB in pregnant women and uptake of preventive therapy in children. So making sure that we have interventions that work for, for everyone. We'll hear more about TB treatment as well. And then a little bit about hepatitis, so not as much as in the past, given the incredible uh, gains in treatment of hep C, but we'll hear about uh, what happens when you effectively treat a lot of people. What does it do to the incidence of hep C? In, in prevention, we're gonna hear a lot more about PrEP and um, how successes and challenges in the rollout of PrEP, understanding adherence to PrEP and uptake and, and understanding some of the disparities in PrEP use currently. Um, and we'll hear a little bit about some of the other uh, prevention modalities as well. Being this is the 25th anniversary or 25th anniversary year, marking that moment in time, uh, as it, somewhat insignificant as it is, but it is significant in the fact that the conference started being called the Conference on Retroviruses and Opportunistic Infections, and now we're comorbidities, we have TB, we have so many other things that are inters inserted, appropriately so, into this conference. Can you talk to the, the different, because we're doing a theme on past, present, and future this year, so it, it's appropriate to kind of give a sense of in simple terms, how it moved from where it was. Yeah, I mean, when CROI started, it was very much U.S. focused, and now today there's mm -hmm. there, there were 700 abstracts. This year, there's 4,009 people at CROI. I think more than a third are from outside the U.S., and we're talking mm -hmm. about you know the global response to HIV um, instead of just focusing on the U.S. response. So that's really evolved over the past 25 years. Uh, we do still have new data on other infections, like cryptococcal meningitis remains an important problem, but, but I think the non-infectious um, comorbidities have really taken more of a center stage. 
aside from TB. Because the um, progress of the person living with this disease and right. the hits you take and so Right, that, that when people are effectively treated with antiretroviral therapy and now there are 21 million people around the world on treatment, um, the problems that we'll have clinically are going to be more in the non-infectious um, area. It's mm -hmm. certainly still have problems with TB and, and hence the interest and focus on how to effectively prevent it and treat it. Should be an interesting conference. Like I say, it's a lot of little pieces. There are none of them unimportant. Yeah. They're all important because they're they're all changing the fatal landscape. So. Yeah, and I think another, but I think an important other important theme at 25 years is young investigators. And right. we had a, a young and new investigators. We had a workshop this morning for new investigators, and I think that we have to really make sure that we're doing everything we can to encourage, mentor, and support young people who are coming mm -hmm. into the field of HIV. Because those of us who have been here since the you're beginning You're one of the younger old-timers. I'm a younger You're one of the younger old-timers. Okay, I'm a young old-timer. But there are a lot of people that are retiring. Yeah. And it's, it's important that we have this cadre of, like we talked earlier, people that are out there pushing an imp, uh, important messages and in a way that they're, you know, activist doctors. Yeah, it's important. no, absolutely. Yeah. I, think we, um, I think it's great that you uh, feature some of the new faces because we, mm -hmm. we need to hear from new, we need new ideas. And, and we will. We'll do that this year for sure. And you, it's up to you to point them out to me. Absolutely. because I, I, And you have <laughs> over the years. And, and your shining stars are start, starting to shine brighter and brighter. So That's we right. appreciate that. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you.